Sega's PR reached out to me recently about sponsoring this video on the Kaito Files, the recently released DLC for last year's Lost Judgment, and I took them up on it for two reasons. First and foremost, they were adamant about me retaining 100% creative control over the video. No talking points to hit, no spin on any thoughts I had. They just wanted me to check it out and make a video on it. A remarkably open brief and a pretty strong show of confidence in the product. But not only that, it just so happens that Judgment, as a spin-off of the Yakuza series, has quickly become maybe my favourite of the RGG Studios franchises. The original won my Game of the Year in 2019 thanks to how gracefully it handled the shift towards a much grittier crime procedural drama, while somehow losing none of the very deliberate tonal extremities that have always lent these games their charm. With that in mind, I was going to be checking out the Kaito files regardless, I could not be more excited for this DLC. But it wasn't just the promise of more judgement that inspired that anticipation. No, in the lead up to the release of the Kaito files, it seemed to be scratching a specific itch that has steadily been developing over the years I've spent with this series. That is, digging deeper into a character that to me possessed so much untapped potential, one that I wanted to know so much more about, and one that I always thought could really shine if he was just given the chance. That character is, of course, the titular Masaharu Kaito. See, as I've stated in the past, the first judgement pretty handily solved the inner turmoil of its protagonist Yagami. He'd found his place in the legal system, his notions of justice felt pretty firmly cemented at its conclusion, meaning that the game's sequel, despite how much I ended up loving it regardless, felt like it was searching for that new, human anchor in its main cast, that central struggle that would help ground the typically labyrinthine, mind-bending events of an RGG Studios plot. And I guess I always felt like the answer to that issue was staring us right in the face. Kaito, with whom we'd have that anchor, that struggle once more. He's someone whose dialogue in prior games always brought some much needed comic relief to the series' incredibly dark narratives, and whose completely unwavering dedication to helping his friends was always enough to make me well up. But the details of his backstory, for all his upfront bravado and gung-ho attitude, were left pretty shrouded in mystery. Sure, he seems like a big lovable oaf, almost innocent in his demeanour at times. But come on, you don't go from ex-Tojo clan member to becoming the muscle for a disgraced lawyer slash detective, beating up drunken goons and gangsters in the street in search of answers to grisly murder cases without having seen some pretty real stuff along the way. That's a hell of a life to lead, and one that I was always pretty sure had a number of stories just waiting to be told. And indeed, the Kaito Files hones in on one such story, as Kaito takes over the Yagami Detective Agency for the day while his boss is away on assignment, only to get hit with a massive case with some extreme personal importance to our newfound hero. A tech CEO seeks out Kaito's help in uncovering the mystery of his former wife showing up years after she was reported dead, and it just so happens that Kaito has a whole bunch of history with this individual too. That's all I can really say without spoiling anything, but cue an adventure that forces our protagonist to confront a past teeming with regret and curiosity for what could have been, while well, the case that brings all of this on becomes exactly the kind of thrill ride filled with all manner of delightfully over the top twists and turns that you've come to expect from these games. And I'm not kidding when I say this, and as always with videos like this I would encourage you to take this with whatever grain of salt you need to, and check out other coverage as well to form your own opinion, but the resulting 7 or so hours it will take most players to complete the story of the Kaito files, much shorter than your typical Judgment or Yakuza story for sure, completely took me by surprise in just how engrossed I became with it, cementing that aforementioned suspicion that Kaito, with the layers of complexity inherent to not just his backstory, but the specific ways in which his character is brought to the fore here, might have secretly been Judgment's biggest strength all along. Because while the screeds of text and cutscenes that help deliver the stories in these games are present and accounted for, as wonderfully written and highly produced as ever I might add, the Kaito Files further confirms my long-held belief that these games don't get enough credit for how well they convey character through gameplay. Far from just being a mere reskin of Yagami, Kaito is shown to be a very different character to his boss from the get-go, with Yagami's nimble, acrobatic, but completely over-the-top flips and tricks as he tries to avoid a small crowd of people in the game's chase scenes, immediately thrown to the wayside as Kaito just barrels on through. It's a similar coarseness you see in the game's ever-impactful combat, 
As Kaito's burly build would suggest, he is indeed a much more tank-like fighter than his wirier counterpart. His appropriately named tank fighting style, similar to Yakuza's beast style it draws from, is a decidedly straight ahead way to deal with enemies, causing chaos as you smash them to the ground with anything that's around you. Forethought be damned. Kaito's mantra appears to be jump in feet first, ask questions later. But just because he's aggressive doesn't mean that Kaito is without his own kind of elegance or nuance. For one, there are a couple of fighting styles to be switched between. Not quite the three that Yagami can choose from in Lost Judgment, but the they nonetheless each retain their own upgrade trees that give you a whole lot of options in a bind. Second, Kaito's life, with all its dramatic twists and shifts in allegiances, isn't one you simply make it through without some degree of brains to bolster your brawn. As such, the bestial rampage of his combat coincides with a similarly animalistic heightening of the senses, seeing Yagami's detective mode return from the prior games, but this time in the form of increased hearing, sight, and smell. Kaito isn't just buff, there's a very real awareness of his surroundings. It's just that what makes him such a charming, funny, and compelling character is that he doesn't necessarily see that himself. See, the thing that really tipped me off that this DLC was going to go some interesting places with this character was how it was able to frame the act of merely hanging out in the open world as a story device in itself. Usually these segments where a character will take some time to go explore for a bit are designed to break up the otherwise constant action of the main plot and get you to just stop and smell the roses a bit to see the lovingly detailed sights that are all around you. In the Kaito files, however, one such segment as you boot up the DLC illustrates illustrates perhaps the key struggle of our hero, that he's a man struggling to figure out his priorities in life and wrestling with the fact that such self-reflection may have come too late for him. In his former dedication to the Yakuza, he's driven away those close to him, and in the years since his expulsion from the Matsugane family, combined with his endless loyalty to those new friends he met along the way, his own sense of identity has long since fallen to the wayside. That is to say, the Kaito Files starts off by asking the question, how does Kaito figure out who he is without Yagami, without someone else to define him. As he calls those close to him to hang out, only to be ditched in favour of more important business or an anime premiere, you're forced to take him drinking on his own. Kaito has dedicated himself so wholly to being the load-bearing wall to all his friends that he has become defined by his role as sidekick to the now absent leading man, seemingly sacrificing all passions or hobbies or someone to share them with in the process. You can tell it's a pretty touchy subject for Kaito too, that maybe the hidden depth to his character, that mystery, might be self-sustained. He's unwilling to go into his past, quickly changing the subject when, for example, the prospect of romance is brought up in conversation. And through all of this, even as you wander the same Kamurocho streets you've explored countless times by now, there's this sense that Kaito is kind of lost. His brash demeanour as he proudly states how his bright, garish fashion choices will never go out of style belies a deeper lack of self-confidence or conviction as he immediately changes his clothes to meet an important client. As flashbacks to his past attest to, he isn't lacking in self-awareness, he is constantly reminded of how his former life as a Yakuza and the apparently unkempt looks that accompany such an outlaw mindset read to the public at large. Sure, he's confident in his ability to smash through whatever bullies lie in his path, he's confident in his duty to those around him, but what's great about the Kaito files is that the Time is taken in amongst all that to bring Kaito's nervous self-reflection to the forefront. You know, what would his life look like if he just hadn't left the house that one time to take part in that raid? What if his priorities had just been slightly different, closer to those he holds now? And even with the DLC's shorter runtime, it doesn't shy away from those quiet moments of rumination on the life he lost out on, with said moments sometimes placed directly in your hands, that constant pondering that he's perhaps messed up a better life for himself, blinding our hero to his very real capabilities in other areas. But obviously it's not all doom and gloom, it's not like Kaito isn't the comic relief anymore, and the Kaito Files is as hilarious as it is dark. It's just that, as is typical of RGG games, every joke is also an opportunity to more seriously develop a character. As an example, Kaito's lack of concern about money is first played off as a comedy bit, about how he has no frame of reference as to the ludicrous price of a watch presented to him as payment for the job. That kind of thing's for rich, snooty types, man. But that comedy is able to shift seamlessly into Kaito's more honourable side as he rejects the payment. For Kaito, the ability to find closure for 
years of anxious wondering about what could have been matters far more than mere financial recompense. But honestly, now that I say it, honour might not be the right way to describe it. It's more just that Kaito is unbothered about becoming some heroic figure or whatever. Instead, true to his more direct style of dealing with problems in his way, he just kind of wants to cut the preamble and get answers. The reward is secondary to the truth. And that sentiment kind of sums up the beautiful versatility of Kaito's character from a writer's perspective. He's likeable, he cares for others, but he doesn't pursue the honourable route as some grand act of self-flagellating valour. Indeed, aside from the sheer strength he shares with a character like Kiryu, for example, Kaito sets himself apart from his more chivalrous predecessor in the sense that Kaito still very much has some of that raw Yakuza mindset left in him. He's not afraid to get his hands truly dirty. Where Kiryu might simply punch a problem away with brute force, Kaito goes one step further. He's similarly driven by that searing hatred of bullies, sure, but he doesn't have a problem utilising the same underhanded tactics he learned through his years in the Matsugani family to take said bullies down a peg, extorting the extortionists as it were. You know, he doesn't need to be downright gallant like Kiryu. He isn't trying to emulate some blueprint of being a hero like Kasuga. He doesn't need to maintain some facade of cool like Yagami with his moody skateboarding gamer dad aesthetic. While I adore all those characters and they all have their place, Kaito can just be what he is, a complex, deeply human character that flirts with all those ideals of prior protagonists, but in a way that ultimately leaves the writers far more range in terms of where they choose to take him. While Yagami's struggle was largely solved at the end of the first game, in many ways, even after the DLC, the path ahead of Kaito remains a blank slate. You know, he's still an ex-Yakuza trying to find his way in the world. It's to the point where, even with the speed at which it throws such wild revelations at you that should leave your head spinning, the story of the Kaito files is so grounded in the ongoing internal struggle of such a well-realised character that I actually ended up becoming more emotionally invested than I did with the main game's narrative. Which, to be clear, I still enjoyed a great deal. Look, no matter how deeply Kaito may be wrestling with the idea of being the sidekick, I can only hope that the RGG team recognises what they've been able to pull off here, bringing what was formerly the comic relief into the spotlight and showcasing his true potential as possibly the best leading man this series has. Thanks to Sega for sponsoring this video and go check out the Kaito Files. If you're as big a fan of the Judgment series as I am, I seriously doubt you'll regret it. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.